This time we are looking at Greensburg on its 150th birthday. And to help us get a picture of the town when it was 150 years old, I use a book that was printed in 1949. It's called the Greensburg Sesquicentennial Book, done by the Sesquicentennial Corporation. And we get to look around town a bit. This is a building that uh, people might remember as the Elks, Greensburg Elks Lodge. And it had been that in 1949 for uh, quite a while, actually about 50 years. The, here, here's what we're looking at, a good context shot. This building and this building up here, the whole block was one time owned by Louis Trauger. He had this as his mansion, and this up here was a store. It was a dry goods store. Trauger was not just a merchant, he was also a banker. And he uh, had this whole block here, which he got in uh, 1859 for about $450, and we can assume that these buildings were built after he purchased this. And Louis Trauger passed away in 1898. And in the very next year, 1899, this became the, the uh, Elks Lodge. This building up here, the location is interesting. That was the location of Greensburg's first newspaper. Actually, the second newspaper west of the Allegheny Mountains called the uh, Farmer's Register. Now we go up. Pennsylvania Avenue a bit to Henry Printing. Incidentally, Henry Printing is the company that did this particular book. Uh, this is, we're out on Tunnel Street looking at it. This was the original building, and this was an addition put on somewhat later. Now you can see it from down below on Maple Avenue. You're looking up Tunnel Street. This building was not built as a printing establishment. It was built as an automobile agency. It was a place where you could rent space to store your car. Also, there was a uh, dealership there that sold Buick and Peerless automobiles. This is looking at it from down below. The founder. Charles Henry began the establishment in uh, the late 1890s and passed away in 1942, and uh, members of his family continued it and do until the present. This is looking at it from up above. This is the rectangle of the original building, which Henry purchased in 1923. He had previous locations, and this is an addition for storage. Now we get on to St. Clair Supply, which was down below, beside the Southwest Branch, just south of the main line. And their business was, um, they were into doing building supplies, the kind of things you need, like sand and cement. They actually made cement blocks there once upon a time. They, they delivered cement also in their ready-mix trucks. This particular location of St. Clair Supply was incorporated in 1905, but it had an earlier location, which we'll see. That's a woodcut I did of St. Clair when it was in business in the 70s, and when the railroad there was still operating. A little drawing I did of it somewhat later, maybe in the 80s. This is mapping from 1915. The main line was up here. This is the Southwest Branch. That's St. Clair Supply. Previously, there had been other operations there. There had been a foundry there, and a. Uh, before that, there was a sawmill, rather a planing mill there. This is Pittsburgh Street down here. Franklin Street is now called Urania, North Urania. Just showing some of their equipment there, ready-mix trucks. They began in 1929 selling ready-mix concrete. Now, that's the earlier location 
of uh, St. Clair Supply on South Urania, right beside the railroad trestle. That's, that's it today. The railroad trestle is still there. They're not usable by railroad. And their operation was right here. They sold material that would come in on the railroad, various kinds of building supplies, and coal and coke. Looking down Urania Avenue, this over here was the location. That's where St. Clair Supply started out. I believe in the 1890s. Now we go down not too far away from that to East Pittsburgh Street where we find Harold's Garage. Originally Harold's Garage was located in another place in another building uh, that began in 1917 and by 1926 Harold's moved into this building here which I'll show you a better shot of. In their early days, they sold such things as Mac Maxwell, Chalmers, Elgin, and Chrysler. And as time went on, and they moved into the new building, they started to sell Nash Automobile. They became a dealership. And most of those cars you, never had, you don't hear about anymore. They're simply gone. This is the building when it was a Nash dealership. That's a context shot looking down Pittsburgh Street. That building's still there. Now this is Beaner's garage. Uh, Fred Beaner standing beside one of his old Hudson's. They had the Hudson dealership. Hudson's was a nice cushy old car. Nice to ride in. You just felt like you were taking your living room out for a ride. Uh, Beaner's had that dealership since 1938, but the garage was there previously. And that building is still there, but unfortunately the building of the uh, Building Route 30 bypass put an end to the dealership because it restricted access to the front of the building and, you know, the showroom. But I can tell you that they're still in business because, because just several months ago, Brad Beaner inspected my van. This is a place that uh, you might recognize on 2nd second, second Avenue. And... Second Street, I think I should say, right down from Pennsylvania Avenue. This was Attorney Klingensmith's house, and it was around, it was later than that. After he had it, it was 1916. Uh, it was turned into an old age ho home for women. This house was used, this house was used as the infirmary. And actually, it's still, both of these places are still used, but no longer as an old, old age home. Ellie and uh, Bob Catcher have the place, both places, and they have fond hopes of turning it into a bed and breakfast, and I wish them uh, good luck in their venture. I hope they do it. And I think that's all for this beginning part of the uh, 150th birthday of Greensburg. We're going to have some more, so I'm going to say so long until later. Bye.